Yeah, we're we real we, talk right here. We're we going to be completely oh, real. Okay, I'm sorry. Ladies and sorry. gentlemen, listen, you know how your man is, Minister Jonathan Simmons. I'm on the scene here, and it has been unbelievable. I'm back here at Mays <laughs> once again making a run to the championship, but we got the ladies in the house, and we got the coach of the team, and she's going to introduce herself to you right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shantae Frost at uh, Benjamin Mays High School. Coach, uh, I mean, you talk about keeping it real, look like y'all kind of beat the brakes off them tonight. Um, not really. Um, it, it might have looked easy, but it was real difficult. Uh, they were a real gritty team. Uh, they kept coming, coming at you, and I told them it's going to be about the game of runs. And they kept coming back. They kept trying to rebound the ball. So it wasn't as easy as it looked by any means, no. And what was really the big key? I know you talked about that this team looked like they had no quit in them. They played right up to the wire. But what was really the key for Mays in their victory tonight? I think it was our post play. I think with us able to being able to get the ball into the post, being able to rebound the ball and outlet the ball and run. I think it's just that we had I think we had a versatile uh, game, offensive game, being able to run, have some half court offense, being able to be being a delay game. Um, I just think our, our versatility is finally paying off. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You, I mean, you and you kept on them right to the end because I mean, even though there's a game out of reach, you still made sure that hey, we are in this all the way a full 40 minute game. Absolutely. Uh, 32 minutes. <laughs> That's it. I forgot about that. That's only 32. <laughs> it's, it's college. Um, uh, one of our things is 32 minutes. We played 32 minutes. And one of the things we need to do was be able to manage the game. And that's what I was trying to get them to do because you never, I've been, you know, of course I've been in the state championship game. And I understand that you have to have a half court offense. You run up and down the floor uh, and you'll get beat. So you have to be able to run, uh, set up a half court offense, play some delay uh, uh, offense, uh, play some good defense in order to win championships. It's funny because you guys actually rocked the uh, North Carolina Blue. It looks like you gave a little tribute to Dean Smith. Come put that four corners on at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did get that from him. <laughs> but uh, just it, just making them patient uh, and getting the absolute shot we're looking for. Not not no shot, but the good shot. So that's what we've been working on. We worked on for a long time on yesterday, and I hollered and screamed at them. <laughs> And they finally got it right today. Well, see what they got it because uh, they really played an outstanding game from right up from the opening bell. Uh, kept their poise, kept with it, and like I said again, at the end slowed the game down when you needed to. So now you guys are on the road headed to Fort Valley. Fort Valley State going down the road. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Coach. It, it really seems only appropriate that you guys coming from Benjamin E. Mays will be going down to an HBCU school location, Fort Valley State. Yes. Um, Fort Valley is wonderful, but I went to Tuskegee University, so I would have rather gone there. But we will go to uh, Fort Valley <laughs> University. That's why we call it Real Talk Sports. Sports is the coach is keeping it real. To you, baby. To you. <laughs> now, now, here's the thing. Now, now, one of the things I talk about, and I'll let you go because I know you, you got to get ready because it seems like these games come so quickly. What can we do, media, parents, uh, even in the church, to maybe inspire more kids to go to HBCU schools? Oh, Wow. Um, I think if we just look at the history of, of who's graduated from HBCUs and understand that it is a place where people can flourish. And I think too often we go to schools where they just go to school and not allow you to flourish. Uh, I think the, the counselors, the, the uh, parents, I think you have to go and just look at the history of Martin Luther King. I mean, you, just, you name it. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, you know, and these are millionaires and, and billionaires that went to HBCUs, and they just allow you an opportunity to flourish. And I and I'm, I, I believe in not just going somewhere, but to flourish while you're there and making a difference while you're there. So I, I am a big HBCU fan. Uh, too many of our kids, our really good kids, don't go. Too many of our ducks dissuade them from for whatever reason. Uh, but it's a lot of history behind it. You have a lot of family. Uh, you want people. They're probably harder on you because they want you to make it because you're representation of their school. Well, the one thing I hope uh, that we'll bring a part of, we're going to be covering the Black College Hall of Fame induction, which is going to be happening here in Atlanta this Saturday. So we got some guys from my era like Donnie Shell from the Steel Curtain and uh, L.C. Greenwood, the late L.C. Greenwood. But also I think guys need to know that Dominic Roger uh, Cromarty came from a, an HBCU school. And guys that are playing right at Michael Strahan. So uh, hopefully we can get that message out that you can be some big-time ballers at HBCU. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had quite a few. I, I, actually, I came from Columbia High School, uh, the Lady Eagles. And we, had, we, had, we still have players at Howard University, Albany State, Tennessee State, uh, and they are not only, they're not only just going there, but they're taking over, and they're having a good time doing it, so, uh, and they're really enjoying themselves, and it's, it's a lifetime of memories. You go back to homecoming, and to people who you know, who've made you who you are, and uh, it's, it's just a great, I, I would never trade it for anything in the world. Of course, listen, we appreciate you taking a little time out here with our show, and uh, we look forward for the Lady Raiders to go on to the next step on that road to making. Oh, absolutely. We're looking forward to it, too. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of them for uh, every every uh, goal I put in front of them. They've accomplished, and uh, yet another one at the uh, Final Four. 
Well, folks, we're back here in the powder blue at Mays. Uh, another run to a state championship game. Hey, if you want more information, check us out on realtalksports.net. I'm your main man, Minister Jonathan Simmons, bringing it to you from live on the scene.